Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I want to talk to you about heat, dust and what you can do to stop your devices being too hot to handle. For many people school's back and that means more and more kids have devices of their own that are new to them. So here's a few tips for parents and kids alike on how to look after your device especially if it's getting too hot. These days, we are squeezing more and more computing power into smaller and smaller devices. It used to be that you needed a giant desktop PC to get amazing performance. But hardware has changed, as is what we do with computers. Just about everybody's computer use revolves around the internet. We do some research, email, documents, and even then our documents can be on the web if we're using something like Google Docs. And in terms of processing power, these are all really quite light. None of this taxes devices very much, and so we've been able to shrink them down and down. Down to the size of a tablet, a phone, or even a watch. The challenge comes along when we do something that pushes the limits of these devices. When a device gets pushed hard, it gets hot. And when I say it works hard, I'm talking about sustained usage that taxes the processor and the graphics system. The three most common things that will do this is video editing, mining for Bitcoin, and gaming. And these days, younger and younger people are gaming on devices, with many of them unaware of how it affects the device. Playing games has become a younger and younger pastime, and lots of the younger people like to do it on tablet computers. Tablets are great, especially for kids. The touch interface seems to work really well for them. The challenge is that tablets are so small that they have to work with what's called passive cooling. There's no fan in there, there simply isn't room. Heat gets dissipated as much as it can by large amounts of metal and lots of surface area. That's why tablets get hot. The whole thing is just a giant heatsink trying to cool the GPU and the CPU. Laptops are slightly better. They're usually actively cooled. That means there's a fan in there to push the heat out and keep the system cool. And because it's on the inside, they can use a much softer metal, copper, that dissipates the heat even better. You can see here the copper pipes attached to the CPU and the GPU, drawing the heat away down to this fin-filled radiator that the fan then blows the air through to cool the whole thing down. Exactly the same way the radiator in your car works. But the air has to get into the laptop as well which is why it needs air vents around the other sides to draw the air in. This will be important in a minute. Desktops are better again, with loads of room for fans, heat sinks, and sometimes even full liquid cooling systems. This is the sort of rig that you would use if high-end gaming is your thing. Heat can be an issue with any of these machines, but there's a bunch of things that you can do to make a difference. Firstly, for desktops, keep them up off the floor and dust out the insides every 12 months, two years, depending on where you live. You can do this yourself with an air compressor or you can even buy cans of compressed air from places like eBay or office stores. If you want to see what happens if you don't ever dust out a computer that's left on the floor in a dirty environment, have a look at the first video that we ever put on this channel. For laptops, keeping the dust out is important too, but so is allowing the machine room to breathe. I hate to say it, but teenagers and doonas are the worst for these devices. As you can see, when you put the laptop on a doona, the doona covers all of the vents on the bottom and around the side, simply allowing the machine no room to breathe. This means the machine gets hotter and hotter, and the only way it can cool itself down is by throttling the CPU and the GPU back and slowing the machine down. Eventually the machine will run so slowly you'll give up playing the game or it will overheat completely and shut down, turning itself off. To fix this, I like to use a decent sized hardcover book, something like an atlas or a cookbook. Pop this on your lap or on the bed and then put the laptop on top of it. Even those rubber feet on the bottom of the laptop are important. They give it an extra few millimetres of breathing space underneath. If they're missing, buy some replacements, either specific to the laptop or from somewhere like eBay or an office supplies store will sell generic rubber feet. Passively cooled devices can also really benefit from a stand or something similar where the air can move around the whole device. It's way better than using it on a blanket or even in your lap. You can even get stable tables 
that sit on your lap and have a nice little slot to hold the device while you're using it. If your device gets really hot, you can also get special stands like this one with a fan in it to keep the air blowing against the rear surface of the tablet. This is especially important when the device is charging as the extra power coming in also generates heat. So there you have a handful of tips for keeping a device cool and lasting longer. Question of the day. Have you ever had a device get too hot to handle? What did you do about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this useful, give it a thumbs up as well. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older episodes you may not have seen before, here and here. And you can click on the logo down here to subscribe to the channel, and then click the bell icon to be notified of every new episode as it comes out. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.